which games did you see that are on the CBS docket that you uh, said, oh, I can't wait to saddle up with Tony Romo and, and call? Well, if you put it that way, just to sit down with Tony and call a game, just to, I'd say every single one of them. Right, exactly. It doesn't matter the game. We have a ball. I mean, we just have the best time. But I loved our schedule, and it's a hard thing to do to keep everybody happy, as you know. Right. And, and, and look, our, our schedule is going to, as always, have eight pre-assigned um, best, best guess scenarios national doubleheaders. Uh, there's some flexibility, obviously, along the way. And if there's week 17, we and Fox both get a doubleheader. So you get nine total. So you really want to see what did they drop in your lap for those 425s. And those 425s included Dallas at the Jets early in the season. Le'Veon Bell, it's like week five or six. Dallas, of course, is always a huge draw. That's a cross-flex game that doesn't normally belong in our package. But this is some of the new programming they've done, the league has done in the last three or four years. That's a good one. Kansas City at New England in December. That's great. Is I believe it's December 8th. Yes, it monster is. game. I think that's the... At least going in, this of course repeat of that epic AFC Championship game. That's um, about as good as it gets. We got New England at Philadelphia, rematch of uh, Super Bowl Fifty Two. Uh, not bad. I mean, there's just a whole list of I think really high quality four twenty five games, and you know, I'm excited about that. I uh, I can't wait to get it started. I'm I'm taking a little deep breath because the yeah. last. The last, uh, well, the first 100 days of the year, including that AFC Championship game, kind of gets lost in this mix of, uh, That's right. of of games I've had a chance to cover. But it's been a whirlwind, and, and I'm back on the air. I'm in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. I've got a tour event this weekend, and it'll, probably the best thing for me is to decompress by being on the air with an event that's not at the Masters scale, but it's important to, you know, whoever's playing in it, and the golf audience is, is behind it, and then I'm going to go underground for a while. And uh, and just be with my family. They're here with me, yep. which is certainly is a blessing. And having them running around and making me feel whole again, and and being back in my most important role as a dad. But uh, yeah, the football season will be here before we know it. I love our schedule, and uh, I love being with Tony and Jim Rickoff and our whole team. It's awesome, Mike Arnold and Tracy Wolfson. It's awesome. Yep, you got Ravens, Steelers, uh, Browns, Patriots, which is going to be uh, of note towards Browns the end of Patriots, October. By the way. Now, I don't want to give away state secrets, but you know, and I'm not a programmer, so it's it. There is, uh, of course, the opponent schedule that comes out the minute the regular season ends. Yep. you know the opponents, as you know, right? But he, for some reason, it's more interesting finding out where the games are positioned on the calendar than who the opponents are. You know, that doesn't not a lot of fanfare at the end of week 17 about the opponent schedule. The big the big reveal is your show last night. But um, we do several of us are asked, and I have a very minor role in this, virtually negligible because mm-hmm. far more qualified people like Dan Weinberg in our place to figure this out. But I really wanted Cleveland, New England. I wanted Cleveland, New England, and I think that there's probably four or five games that we go to the league and say, we'd really like to keep these. We know we're not going to get all five of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we probably got four out of the five. And my big thing, even before the Beckham trade was, Cleveland is a team on the rise, and Baker Mayfield against Tom Brady, uh, there will be a lot of energy in that building. And I really wanted to see us get that game. That was the one thing I pushed for. I knew that they were all over Kansas City, New England, and New England uh, at Philadelphia and all that kind of thing. But I was thrilled to see. That's a week eight doubleheader. Of course, now Beckham's on, uh, you know, on, on the scene, and it's interesting. I thought the league showed the Browns a lot of love it last did. night. Yep, with that schedule. I mean, they they what, got four primetime games, which okay, we, we can we can jockey on this all we want, and and those are huge. But the 425s are huge. The 425 actually does a bigger national rating than the primetime games does, as you know this, too. It's one of the little kind of un, 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 unexplored or unappreciated numbers is the Fox and CBS 425 games actually end up at the end of the season have the biggest rating of any time block. And they've got, I believe, three Cleveland games in the 425 window, two of them are definitely going to be the national game. That one at New England and the one on Thanksgiving Sunday at yeah, Pittsburgh. Right. There's a game uh, on week nine where Cleveland's at Denver and at the same 425 window, 
is Green Bay at the Chargers. So there's a hedge there. It could go either way. Green Bay is such a national team. I would say right now that's Green Bay at the Chargers is probably uh, going in as the favorite to be the big national game because Denver's a little bit of a wild card, let's face it. And, you know, we've we got to see how Cleveland's going to react to it. I think they'll react well. But I would say Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Cleveland, New England, those are now, with the four prime times, those are six massive are. exposures for that franchise. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.